I like to consider myself a fairly big movie buff. Uh, I love movies. I love talking about them, you know, going on my YouTube channel here and sharing my thoughts and recommendations or, in some cases, warnings. Um, but no matter how big of a movie buff you may claim to be, uh, there's always going to be some movies, uh, very notable ones that, for one reason or another, you may not happen to have seen. One of those for me was Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, I was familiar with the movie. I've seen bits and pieces of it, like when it was on TV or some stuff like that, and I was fairly familiar with some of its more memorable scenes it's iconic scenes stuff like that you know uh, uh the the mashed potatoes uh building the uh, uh little uh, mountain out of those uh, richard dreyfus hunched over his uh, uh dinner plate where his family's like dad what's going on <laughs> um uh and of course uh, the kid opening the door and the big beam of light and of course that mothership at the at the end uh hovering over the mountain you know and the, and the music coming out Boom, 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 boom. So I, I was aware of it. I knew a fair amount about it, but never sat down and watched the whole thing. So I'm going to correct that, I thought, and I did. And last night I watched the movie for the first time. Uh, I, I was blown away from from it. I, I really was. Um, or blown away by it, however you want to put it. Uh, I thought it was great. I loved it. Uh, and, you know, kicking myself now, thinking... Why did it take me so long to watch this incredible, incredible movie? Uh, it definitely spoke to a part of me that's so fascinated by the possibility of extraterrestrial life. And, and it's in a, in a definitely a different way than what Spielberg has explored in things like uh, E.T. and uh, uh, War of the Worlds and things like that. So it's a very different type of movie. So he's, he's tackled that subject, but in, in a very different way here, in a way that I really like. Uh, but I've just always been kind of fascinated by that and, and terrified at the same time. Um, I remember seeing Fire in the Sky when I was a little kid. Traumatized me. I'm still traumatized to this day. Uh, still very scared but fascinated about things alien-related, I, I guess. And probably a, a very dorky confession I have to make about myself. When I was a kid in, in grade school, I started this little club. Uh, I called it the Alien Club, where me and you know three or four other kids or, or whatever would uh, uh, talk about aliens and the what we thought they looked like, draw pictures of them, and share our own personal experiences. Like, I saw a UFO once. Meanwhile, it was like a plane, but whatever. Um, here, the UFOs are really unidentified flying objects, and the encounters of the third kind uh, mean contact, uh, direct contact with these extraterrestrials. Um, so it begins off uh, uh, fa fairly slowly, seeing these hints of things to come, seeing these bright lights in, in the sky uh, whizzing by. Like, what are these things? It's very interesting. The movie is uh, kind of divided into two sections. Uh, one is the story with the, uh, the cartographer, uh, play, played by uh, Bob Balaban, uh, him getting involved with this French guy, uh, played by uh, Francois Truffaut, actually, uh, a French uh, director, famous French director, uh, who's, who's actually really good uh, being an actor in this movie, which is kind of funny, because, you know, I guess Spielberg just maybe has this ability to to uh, convince directors to to work as actors in certain movies, like he does here, and uh, with Richard Attenborough in, in, in Jurassic Park, and of course, you know, with his long standing relationship with Stanley Kubrick, you know, there's you know, always been those rumors that uh, uh, he, he plays a pirate in, in Hook, which I don't know if that's true, but there are people who are like, swear, like, yeah, you can see him in Hook as a pirate. Um, but whatever, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And, and I, I do think, you know, he, he feels like a, a natural actor, a very appropriate for this type of character, which is kind of mysterious, uh, but has this, you know, kind of sense of wonder about him, which is why he's, you know, on this journey with uh, Bob Balaban. And, and actually, part of that whole crew, there's actually Lance Henriksen, too, which I don't think he has any lines, but it's always cool to see him, specifically in, like, older movies like this, um, before he became Lance Henriksen, um, that's cool. And the other uh, section is a more domestic uh, part of the movie where kind of representing uh, all these different types of characters, um, I think it takes place in Ohio, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, or Wyoming, or whatever. Um, but he's this father, he's kind of a, uh, you know, uh, 
troubled with his family. You, you kind of see him in, in his opening scene where he's arguing with his uh, kids and kind of being a, a little bit of a douchebag to them. I, I know, a flawed father in a Steven Spielberg movie? What? No, seriously, this is real. Um, but he, he doesn't seem, you know... Uh, like a, a, too much of an asshole, just kind of you know distracted, I guess. But then he starts to, you know, see these uh, uh, flying uh, objects in the sky, and other, other people see them too. And, and that's really interesting. Like when when they come into close contact, you know, see all, all the things. You know, like he's in his his, his little truck there, and like the radio kind of goes crazy, and uh, things are kind of floating in the air and, and gravity goes nuts and and when the lights whiz by him uh, he gets like a sunburn uh, half across his face which i thought was kind of cool so there's other people who have encountered him, including uh, this uh, single mother uh, uh played by uh, miranda uh, dillon um in her role uh her son finds him and she finds him and all these other people there's this really creepy scene where like they, they all kind of meet at this one point on the on the highway and, and there's her and the kid and richard dreyfus and these two uh, old people and these twin boys, and it's it's really unnerving, actually. And, and that's the thing about the movie. And the thing about Spielberg, when he deals with this kind of content, even though like something like E.T. is supposed to be very, you know, uh, wonderful and, and touching, there's still s this really unnerving element about it. And, and I think he, he, he really captures that in a great kind of way. Like I, I was, you know, in awe of this movie just as much as I was terrified by it. I'm going to have nightmares uh, for, for weeks. Um, just because, I mean, when it all kind of reaches you know, to the resolution, uh, with the stuff with the mothership, you still really don't know kind of the, 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 the aliens MO, um, which I, I mean, I won't give away, but like the whole movie is like leading towards this where, you know, on, on one side of things, they're they're finding the coordinates, and another side of things, uh, the people who have directly contacted, they, they seem to have this psychic connection almost, where they're all uh, having this vision of of this mountain, and, and, and they're all drawn towards that, and just they, they know things without really knowing why. They have these instincts that may have been implanted into them, this psychic connection, which I think is very interesting, you know, there, there's this whole kind of... Uh, uh, select few people who who have uh, come that far uh, to 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 witness whatever it is basically um definitely the stuff at the end with the mothership I mean, in case you haven't seen i'm not going to give too much away actually you know what spoilers spoilers in this review um so spoiler warning there you go um the stuff with the mothership it comes down it is a work of art. This thing, like, uh, again, I just saw the movie for the first time, so I don't really know too much behind-the-scenes type, type of stuff about it. Um, though after watching that, kind of went on IMDb to, to look up some stuff. But this thing, this creation, it's so amazing. Uh, like, knowing what I know about, like, say, other movies that use the same similar uh, type of uh, special effects, like the practical effects, the, the uh, overlay... Uh, optical optical kind of effects um like something like with blade runner for example i'm watching this and i feel like pain <laughs> watching it because I, I know how difficult that must have been to accomplish those effects like it it, it, it unnerved me in, in such a way almost as much as the content of the movie itself but seeing what they accomplished that is that is a work of art that is the fucking sistine chapel of uh alien spacecrafts in movies it's so awe-inspiring so cool um and we meet aliens too and, and they they creep the hell out of me um the little tiny alien things and there's one with you know really long limbs and the aliens communicate through sign language um the the last few minutes of the of the movie the, I, I don't even think there's any dialogue it's all kind of established through this this mood that that spielberg is able to create and with john williams score his wonderful wonderful score um, just creating these feelings, um, so you don't really quite know what's going on, but it, it captures over you this 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 sense of, of of wonder. But you know, in the back of your head, you think danger too. So I don't really know what the aliens' mo are, but b basically, uh, Dreyfus he, he gets gets aboard the the mothership and flies away. Um, so that that's kind of you know his resolution as a character. That's what everything was leading up to towards him, which I, I would say it's it's a little kind of 
cause for judgment on the character because you know he's he's leaving his his family away but meanwhile you know he's acting so crazy throughout the the, the whole part of the movie where you know his his long suffering wife uh, played by Terry Gar who's great um she's just kind of takes off hits the road uh, basically is you know he's like in his uh, pajamas basically where are you going honey um well you're crazy dear um but so maybe that kind of eased the blow a little bit, but I don't know if you want to look at it on a, on a deeper level or something like that. Of course, it is Spielberg, um, who who always kind of has these themes of of fathers in his movies, where the fathers either are, are deadbeats or abandon their sons, and, and maybe there's something to to take from the fact that okay, this father basically abandons his family, but uh, it's it's for this greater purpose. So I mean, if, if you look at this through the eyes of uh, of a of a of a kid who whose father split on them, you kind of think about this fantasy of well, what if it's for this greater purpose, like going off into another planet, which maybe again eases the blow a little bit. I don't know, but um, uh, it's it's an interesting ending. And the version I watched is uh, the the special edition version, which apparently is the most seen. I guess the theatrical version isn't. As touted by Spielberg, I guess this is his sort of definitive version, though I know there's yet another version of this uh, called the Director's Cut, which maybe is a little bit more definitive. But in this version, we see a little bit of, of the inside of, of the uh, the mothership, which I, I know there's probably, you know, quite a bit of uh, other uh, changes to the movie, but I thought mm, maybe we didn't need to see the inside of it too much. Um, it would have been interesting to, to keep a little bit of, of the... Uh, uh, mystery to it, which I don't think it makes or breaks it anymore. It just kind of makes that scene longer and more awe-inspiring, which I don't think I don't think it hurts it. But uh, uh, I don't feel like if I had not seen the inside of the ship, I don't think I'd be, you know, sitting here right now saying, uh, I, "I wish we would have seen the inside of the ship." No, ultimately the movie is not about that. It's about this character and his journey to to find uh, answers to questions he's not sure. Uh, what what are basically he, he just dri driven by this instinct um, to to know which is the story of this character and it's the story of mankind itself wondering what's out there wondering what the answers uh, are and, and wondering what the questions are basically in extraterrestrial life does it exist what does it want what's it going to do let's find out um, so he goes off and I, I, I you know I'd, I'd love to see where he is right now I mean basically the movie deals with other people um uh, who who were abducted in I believe it's the 40s um, who come back and they're all like wow I'm back you know things like that so I'd love to see like a sequel to this movie where like Richard Dreyfus he comes back he's like guys check this shit out I was with aliens in, for like three decades um, there's still time Spielberg Dreyfus get on it man um, but yeah the the movie it's it's spectacular I, I mean I, I don't think I really even need to tell you this but if you're like if you're an idiot like me and you haven't seen the movie uh, give it a shot it's probably on Netflix uh, very entertaining uh, in times very frightening there's one scene in the movie where uh, the the mother and her, her son are, are being uh, pursued by the the aliens while they're in their house and uh, you see all these bright lights and the scary music is going and she's screaming and uh, the, the, the screws are, are coming unloose from the door and oh, it's just so terrifying but also just it has a sense of wonder about it and really great special effects that you know at, at the time must have been painstaking to to accomplish and even several decades later I, I think they do look great though of course you know they do have flaws here and there you can tell kind of what's this optical effect and uh things like that so i mean it, it doesn't look perfect but for the time man this this is great um so i really enjoyed the movie um I really did. It's 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 yet another Spielberg masterpiece, I would say. So I'd rate Close Encounters of the Third Kind four stars out of four. I fell in love with this movie. It is a terrifying and awe-inspiring and wonderful piece of filmmaking magic, as only Steven Spielberg can provide to us. So that's my review, maybe a first impression, if you want to call it that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I finally got to see the movie. Um, Really something special, really something spectacular. Um, Spielberg, just one of the greatest directors of all time, undeniably. Um, so I, I really can't believe that I, I went so long without seeing it. But it's another one off the list. Uh, plenty more where that came from. And that's why we, we, we seek Netflix. That's why we search out these types of movies. It's now, today, more than ever with you know streaming and things like that, it's easier and easier to, to access great movies. So... You know, it's it's up to us to seek them out. Um, so definitely give this a watch if you haven't already. Uh, so that's my review today. 
comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Visit Derek237.com. That'd be awesome. And until next time, I'll see you later.